friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you're back. Either way, um, thank you so so much for clicking on my video today. If you are new, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they them. And um, today's video is really exciting, um, for me anyway. I feel really bad because I started this like back in January and just have been putting off making like the full video about it for so long um because I tend to do that kind of thing I get really involved in a project and then I move on to something else but regardless this video today is all about my kind of creepy modified plushy collection that I have some of behind me right now so that's going to be kind of like the first part of this video and then the second part is going to be a modification kind of video process uh, this guy over here, this guy, I tried to use many different techniques and stuff in one so that basically if you see one you can kind of understand the general process um, and the show and tell portion is kind of just to show like maybe some inspiration for you guys um, if you're wanting to make your own, just different methods that you might be able to use and stuff. Sorry if I still sound sick, I am. And it sucks. Um, but yeah, regardless, that's what this video is about. I've put it off for long enough. Okay, so I feel like it would only be fitting to start with the first guy that I made. So may I introduce you to Jack. Um, Jack is a lot of fun. They're like this two-headed bunny plush. Um, one half is made out of this um, really almost like tie-dye looking, very soft, uh, blue, purple, lavender kind of material. I really like the face on this one and the other one's like a much more like one solid color lavender bunny. Um, cut in half, sewed together, attached two heads. I feel like the two-headed design is like a classic for creepy plushies. I think it's a great design to like start with if you're starting out and just want to like kind of experiment to add a little extra spice to Jack. Um, I gave him this little black satin bow and I pinned this little black heart um, that I just cut out of felt onto his chest. Um, he's got a little horn on the lavender purpley blue head and some little cheek dimple piercings that I don't know if you can see but they're just like these kind of silver beads. One look that I freaking love and I miss having my nose pierced so that I was able to do this because I used to have it pierced um, but like the nose chain that goes to your earring. If you have a nose piercing and an earring piercing and you have a bracelet it's the freaking best look ever. I love it. Um, so since I can't have it, I decided to give it to Jack over here. And I just gave a couple of different safety pins in the ear. These ears were originally floppy, so I just added wire inside of them to make them be like a little bit more poseable. So you could do like the really cute like flop one ear over kind of look. Um, I really, really like Jack. I think they turned out great. And even though they're a little bit more simple, I still think that this is like a really effective design. My little, my little firstborn, you know? Okay, um, on to the next. I want to show you guys one of of my favorites. I think this actually might have been the second one that I made. This is Cerberus. I was really into Greek mythology when I was a kid so he's named after the three-headed dog that like guards the underworld and like helps um, the, the fairy man and stuff. Um, so yeah, Cerberus is primarily made out of this one white bear plushie that was holding one of those like it's a girl sort of thing but I've always wanted to make myself a patch that says like it's a it not because I use it's it pronouns even though I think uh, people who do are amazing. Um, I just think it would be a really cute patch uh, but this guy beat me to it so its little heart says it's a it instead of it's a girl and it's got these little teeth that I made out of clay on the heart that I just put down and like a little spider web, little upside down crucifix, little um, safety pin, just like random little bits and bobs that I had in my craft box. I made these horns out of clay, air dry clay, and then I just painted them or maybe polymer and I put them in the oven. Uh, but either way, they're on some safety pins so that you can like twist them around and put them in different spots and stuff and you know. He's got some cheek piercings on the bare face and this little bat in the center of his head which I just think is so cute. Um, this side is a purple bunny like kind of TY plushie that I added an extra eye to and a couple of ear piercings in both ears. And on the kitty TY side we have just like this kind of gray adorable kitty with like a little rhinoceros horn and like little safety pin ear piercings, little cheek piercings and I just think he's so cute. Um, I did give extra arms to this friend so I think he has six arms total and I just think it's like such a fun little friend. Absolutely one of my favorite ones that I made. I think that those little it's a boy it's a girl are a great candidate for these kind of projects. Um, by the way all of these plushies that I Got the materials were from the thrift store. Most of these guys were like a dollar to five dollars for the plushies and so I didn't feel too bad about like ripping them up and stuff. Have a lot of plushies in my own collection but I'm too sentimentally attached to them 
to um, rip them up. So I kind of did that with other people's old plush, which I'm sorry, <laughs> but like new life, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it is what it is. Okay, but let's go on to another guy who's a lot of fun. He kind of feels like a hippie bear. I had like a really big hippie phase when I was younger and I don't know, something about him reminds me of like a Grateful Dead bear or something, maybe just because of the tie-dye or whatever. But yeah, this one's a lot of fun. I don't know if I ever gave him a name, but he is technically three-headed because one of his heads is on his belly and it's a Care Bear head but that I made into like a Cyclops. And then and this bear, I took the eyes out and replaced them with buttons and made it look all like spidery and fun. Oh yeah, his name is Oddity. I forgot. Yeah. So lots of times I will forget the names that I give to my creations unless I keep a spreadsheet of them like I do for my dolls. But I didn't make a spreadsheet for these guys, but I did make some of them friendship bracelets with their name on them so I wouldn't forget. So Oddity is this one. I again made these little horns out of clay. I really like the mismatched look and this one kind of reminds me of a robin's egg. It's like this blue with like black speckles and this one's like pink and black. It wasn't what I was originally going for, but I think it works. One of the extra eyes I salvaged from another project. So it looks like one of those cool inset eyes because most of the other extra eyes that I use are beads, just like black glass beads or plastic beads. One of Oddity's earrings is like a little spider on a safety pin and the other one is a little skeleton hand. I got all these different charms in these like kind of packs of like Halloween charms online a long time ago and they've just been so helpful for these kind of creations. I also made all these little bracelets that I mentioned. He's got a little ribbon tied around this one hand and I don't know if it really works but I gave him like a Hello Kitty band-aid. It's just like cute little Hello Kitty band-aid. I got it at Shoppers on sale a while ago, but it kind of looks like someone just left their band-aid on a teddy bear, so I don't know. Maybe it adds to the creepy gross factor, so it kind of works, but you know, it is what it is. And he also has this like pink satin bow that I don't remember what I got off, but was like the perfect size. I didn't even have to cut it and it like fit oddity perfectly. So yeah, really, really like this guy. He's like very pastel and fun and kind of like hippie-ish in a way, just because of the, like the tie-dye and like these bracelets kind of remind me of rave kids because I like, I don't know, I've never been a rave kid, but I've always loved rave kids. I used to go to a lot of festivals, so I'd always see them and they were, all these looks like so, they were having so much fun. This one's fun. Um, you guys, I'm sure you know their channel, but in case you don't, I would highly, highly, highly recommend The Stitches on YouTube. They're incredible, such an inspiration for me. Yeah, I love their stuff. And this bear was kind of inspired by one of their um, tutorials where they did like this stuffed animal bag and they used a red bear. And after Valentine's Day happened, I was seeing all these like red bears in the thrift stores and stuff. And I just had to pick one up to make like a little two-headed two-headed devil bear guy and um I'm pretty happy with how he turned out but I don't love this muzzle I'm still like debating whether I want to like cut it out and replace it with something different but regardless um he's got some plaid wings that I made out of felt on one side and just added some scrap um, plaid from an old shirt on the other side. Um, he has this heart that originally he was like holding like this and I added these like stitches which were supposed to look like a broken heart but they ended up looking more like a corset which is weird but whatever. Um, added like this little skeleton hand charm and safety pins and I just detached it so he's kind of holding it. I gave him some necklaces. These are like different pieces of scrap chain that I attached together because I didn't have long enough that would go around his neck. And also this like kind of ribbon with a spider charm I thought was a lot of fun. He's got like some random safety pins all throughout in the ear, in the arm, etc, etc. But I really like putting beads and charms and stuff on the safety pins. So for instance, this one has like this little silver skull, which I think is a lot of fun. And his other earring, he has like this big dagger with like almost wings or something. And I gave him like kind of a unicorn horn. And he has some button eyes that are different sizes. <laughs> and big ol' um, safety pin nose piercings. And on this side, he already came with the devil horns, but I added a bunch of different eyes and the classic nose to ear chain, cause it's like a great look, but this one also goes down to his foot. And yeah, he's <laughs> one of the very few, like kind of bright colored ones that I did because most of my plushies are like pastel, or, like neutral colors. My favorite ones are the pastel ones, but yeah, he like very much stands out. Um, and his name is Beelzebub. Love this guy, a lot of fun. Little, little devil bear friend. Okay, this one's fun. So I have, for a long time, since I like found out about it, have been really fascinated by Lolita fashion, but I've never like kind of had the funds or the patience to make my own cords or anything like that. So I settle for making kind of Lolita inspired stuff for my dolls and occasionally for my teddy bears. So um, this was supposed to be kind of a Lolita inspired eye patch on this bear. I apologize if I'm completely disgracing the community. I feel like, it's a very beautiful and intentional community and sometimes I worry I don't get, do them justice. <laughs> 
<laughs> when I like talk about them. But regardless, um, it's like this little felt eye patch with like some lace and like this little like cross and just like a ribbon that ties around. And I gave the bear another like a little horn and he's got some earrings in this year. One of them is like a key ring, which is cool. Oh, and I gave him like a stretcher, it looks like, yeah. <laughs> which is just like a grommet because I found that if you put grommets in teddy bears ears, it looks like they have stretched ears. And then got like a little dangly bat hanging off one ear which is fun and in this year he's got like a bunch of safety pins and all the different eyes he has six eyes on this side and then i replaced one of the original eyes with a button eye and the pink bow i honestly really prefer when i have like kind of pastel um colors to work with for the teddy bears i don't really love doing the neutral colors so i like to kind of bring in the pastels with like the eye patch or like with the ribbon but i kind of wish i did more to this guy i was thinking of adding like maybe a cast or something but um yeah for now he's okay i also changed out one of his legs so he has like one bear leg and one bunny leg but a lot of fun i don't think he has a name yet but i think he's pretty cute and yeah this is fun this is lucy which is short for lucifer and she's fun because she reminds me of crystal who is this giant version of like a big um horse teddy bear like this that i sleep with at night because she's like the perfect size for spoonie i don't know what just fell hopefully nothing important okay but basically lucy is a lot of fun she has six eyes she kind of reminds me of like a spider in that way and she's got like ear piercings one of them is like this little spike just like a yeah, you can get these um, online, these little like screw-in spikes, and they're really handy for craft projects in my opinion. Got some safety pins on the ears as well, and I put a little metallic star under the horn. Uh, oh, I see what fell. Okay, what fell was her Karomi necklace. She has a little Karomi charm normally on her necklace, that sucks. Um, I'll show a picture. And on this arm she has like a little bow, and on this leg she has like a little piece of black lace. And then I gave her these wings that are a lot of fun because they're these like Halloween skeleton hands that glow in the dark, but they also like kind of flap, which is cool. And then on her tail, I gave her this little accessory that's like a black plastic bat, which is like a ring from Halloween. Oh, I didn't even notice, but on her bow, there's like a little tiny heart, a little tiny heart button. How sweet is that? Oh, and I almost forgot on her cutie mark, which was normally originally just like these purple hearts, I put these little ghosty sequins. So uh, yeah, super cute. I like Lucy a lot. Even though normally I don't um, love modifying plushies that are kind of lying down this way. I prefer the ones that are kind of sitting up. Um, but Lucy works. Okay, whom's is next? This is Fangs. Fangs is named Fangs because Cage thought that these were chin piercings, which have you ever heard of such a thing? Come on. Uh, I mean, no offense to if you do have chin piercings, I'm sure it looks right. But these are obviously little Fangs, right? Okay, um, this one was a lot of fun, I thought, because when I originally found this, these stuffed animal bunnies, they already like looked weird and creepy because of like their dark circles around their eyes and stuff. So I was like, I don't even have to do anything that much to like make them weird. So I just um, put two together, made them two headed. They were originally on these like weird flower pot stands, which were very annoying to get out of, but it's fine. Um, I put a chain on the hand. So they're like kind of chained together and a pink bow around the neck. This kind of helps hide like messy seams. If you don't like sewing things inside out like myself, classic nose to ear chain and some other random like little jump ring ear piercings fangs also like this little charm of fangs in the ear and then in the other ear we've got a spider charm and more safety pins um i used an extra one of the like safety eyes to like put inside the seam and i think it looks so cool like it just gives like such a cool effect of like this eye like almost like not fully emerged yet in my opinion and we already talked about the fangs which are just spikes and look a little bit goofy but i think it's okay goofy and creepy and cute is like all part of the things that I love, so it, it, it all works out. Um, so yeah, this is Fangs, a little two-headed bunny um, with like extra eyes and weird chin piercings, and he works, so yeah. This is Innocence, and they are a two-headed kind of bunny lamb situation. This T.Y. lamb is a great um, plush like on its own, even without modification, but I was really happy to find one at the thrift store that I could just add to like a creepy bunny. Um, so yeah, two-headed bunny. I made the eyes different sizes of buttons and added like an upside down cross in the bunny's forehead. I also gave them some safety pin earrings as usual and ear stretchers as well as this like little skull and crossbones earring that was just for my personal collection. <laughs> Broken leg that is just held together with like some normal medical gauze from the cabinet. Some scrap lace around one of the other legs. A little bat earring on the ear of the lamb and these different um, horns. 
that are just like spikes. They've got a little bell on their collar, which is pink satin otherwise, and this little like metallic heart that's like one of those with the prongs that you just like put inside the fabric. The lamb side has five eyes that are just like kind of black beads. And they're like also one of those a little bit goofy ones. Yeah, a little bit silly, a little bit goofy, but creepy and fun and cute and I enjoy them. So that's Innocence. And let's talk about another bunny lamb. Um, this one, I don't know if they're done because I didn't really do that much to them. I just like sewed two together, uh, but it kind of works. And I feel like adding a bunch of safety pins would make it look maybe weird. I don't know. We'll have to see what I end up doing with these guys. But they are, yeah, this two-headed bunny lamb. The lamb has like a little hat. The bunny has like a very cute plump face. I added like a pink ribbon to hold them together. The arms are both like lamb hooves, but I added one bunny leg and he's got two tails and no name yet. But I have been seeing these clay stuffy face modifications and it's been making me be like, uh, do I want to do that? I want to do that. Looks cool. Frig, you know? Um, so that might be in the future for this guy. We'll see, we'll see. Spider is a little bit weird. He didn't really turn out that great in my opinion, but I made him using the leftover purple body of Cerberus's um, leftover purple body of the bunny head um, is this guy because originally the bear was wearing a diaper, which I couldn't really deal with. Um, it was like kind of one of those it's a boy sort of situations. Um, got a little like a little bracelet with his name on it and his little horns remind me of antennas. He's got four eyes and they kind of just look like they're seeing double almost which is fun. Um, I gave him cheek piercings which I just achieved by adding safe like pins into his face. Um, this is the same way that I pierce my doll's faces when I'm making customs and stuff. Got a spiked choker which I made and added a little spider charm because that's his name uh, and he's got like a little spider web on one arm. This arm is from the Care Bear this guy's kind of situation. I still have a bag of like leftover stuffy parts that I will be using eventually, we'll see. And he's got this fun little stud in one earring that's like an actual, just like regular earring, but it looks like a stud. And it was like from when I was like 12 years old, like it's surprising that it stayed with me so long. And I put jump rings as these little hoop earrings and usual safety pins as the other earrings. Gave him like a little star belly because it kind of reminded me of trolls and I freaking love troll dolls. And um, yeah, Spider is a little bit funky, but he's, He's okay, he works. And then this video will be showing how to make a guy like this. I don't remember what this guy's name is, I forget. Uh, but he's a lot of fun, I won't go into it too much, too much because you will see the making of him if you're interested, but rundown is that he's like a white cat with two extra heads and lots of weird spikes and random bits and bobs and pearls on the back and a spider and it's it, he's just like a lot of fun but he was mostly just made to show a accumulation of like how to make a plushie so that like if you see one you can kind of figure out how to make anyone and then I figured in case you haven't seen this that video I would just show really quickly um, because I always get asked oh you like make plushies and I'm like no I modify them and the people are like oh well do you make any from scratch and it's like meh well I did so um, the three that I made from scratch are just like knockoff Emily the Strange plushies so we've got fake cat um, Miles as like a skill animal. This one's my favorite. I freaking love him so much. He's so soft, so huggable. Feels like a bean bag um, because he used beanie baby beads inside. And yeah, these projects were like a great way to use a bunch of the leftover plush that I had from these projects, like the stuffing. And then fake cat number two, who's a little bit dorky and is missing his nose, which I will have to locate at some point. Um, so yeah, <laughs> those are the plushies that I have modified and made. I hope that gave you some inspiration for making your own maybe. And if you're interested in like the how to make, then keep on watching and I will show the tutorial part now. Uh, thank you for your patience. Okay, so step one, of course, is to select your victims. Um, these ones I just got from the local thrift store and uh, you're just gonna want to remove any tags or little accessories that you don't want in there in my case just like some crowns and stuff and then I'm wanting to make a three-headed guy so chop everyone's heads off to get that started to ensure that they have enough space I'm just removing a little bit of stuffing from each head so that it's a little bit easier for them to fit together on the body um, I found this helps a little bit and then the other thing that I found helps is just sewing up the heads before you sew them all together I find it uh, just makes it less of a hassle 
to have the heads kind of pre-sewn together before you attach them together and then before you attach them to the body. Just uh, kind of streamlines the whole process and makes things sit together more nicely, but you can experiment with whatever methods work for you. Um, for everything, I'm just using hand stitching also. Uh, then I'm taking two bodies that I would like to combine and cutting them in half, just removing any random little uh, bells and whistles that I find inside there. I'm using half of the blue bunny body and half of the white cat body. Body, just making sure that I am cutting off the portion with the tail still attached because I want the white cat tail to be on my finished plushie. Just using like these big scissors that I got from Ikea. I'm so sad I broke them since this video. Um, I miss those scissors, they were very handy. Anyway, then I just um, kind of put the two bodies together and I find it helpful to use some sewing pins to help line them up. Um, they're not quite the same size. The blue body is like a little bit smaller so it turns out a little bit lopsided but I don't mind it kind of adds to the Franken plush kind of look also I really don't mind the messy stitches on um, these guys because they're supposed to look kind of weird and creepy but if you want to avoid having the stitches visible you're just gonna want to take all the stuffing out sew the plushes together inside out and then turn them back and stuff them and then you won't be able to see any of the stitches but for me it just was like too much of a hassle and I also don't mind the messy stitches so I'm just going along and hand stitching with some purple thread I wanted it to be kind of visible so that's why I'm not bothering going with like some white thread or anything like that to make sure that he's properly plump I'm stuffing some of the extra stuffing back into the body um, it's just easier to sew it when it's a little less empty um, but then I'm refilling it to make sure that he's properly squishy. And then I want the stitches to have sort of a crisscross vibe, so I'm going in with the same embroidery thread again and just adding like a little X pattern with this very simple, I think it's called a whip stitch, um, over all of the spots that I originally sewed. And this just makes the sewing a little bit more visible, makes it a little bit more secure. All right, then I wanted to mismatch some of the arms and legs, so I chop off the two front arms and decide to just um, mismatch them. So blue arm on the white body and the white arm on the blue body. And I just use my sewing needle and purple embroidery thread to very haphazardly attach them. Again, um, I'm not really caring about clean stitches, but if you did, just do it inside out. Um, then it's time to kind of attach the heads together. So I'm starting by just attaching the white cat head to the blue bunny and then attaching the pink bunny to that combination. Again, I'm just using this embroidery thread and being fairly messy, you can, yeah, it takes kind of some trial and error to figure out the best way that works for you. But for me, it kind of worked out best to just kind of hold them together like take little bites out of the out of each piece of fabric with my sewing needle and just used a like really big needle and a really big embroidery thread and it worked out okay in my opinion and I do like to leave the neck open because that way you can put it around all three of the heads just going ahead and using my sewing needle and thread to attach the neck to all of the heads just going around and it might be helpful to pin it in place but this guy was so small that honestly I feel like the sewing pins would have just gotten in the way getting the head attached until we are happy with that then I decide I want to do a little bit more like weirdness with the legs so I'm chopping off the back legs on both sides and taking um, extra legs from the blue bunny body and from the white cat body so he gets six legs it kind of reminds me of like a spider or an octopus or something uh, kind of a weird little look but I enjoy it I honestly find it's more helpful to add more limbs to larger stuffed animals on little ones it can look really crowded but I figured I'd you know do some experimentation that's why all of them look you know not perfect but they all have their own little vibe then i'm taking this uh, spiderweb ribbon that i got from the dollar store around halloween and just measuring it around my stuffy's neck and taking these little spikes that i got online from like studsandspikes.com or something like that and a little pair of nail scissors to cut a tiny tiny hole in the ribbon and then these spikes are screw on so i'm just attaching them by hand screwing three of them in so that there's like a little spike choker for my guy to wear measuring it back around looks good so I just tie the back in a bow you could also um, use some glue if you don't want the bow sort of look but I don't mind it I think it looks pretty cute bow just kind of adjusted a little bit then it's time to add some extra eyes to um, my guy so I'm starting with these little black beads that I just got um, at the thrift store ages ago and some white embroidery thread and I'm adding five eyes I think in total uh, but just kind of going with some regular sewing thread 
and these black uh, beads. They're either glass or plastic, either one would work um, until I'm satisfied with the amount of eyes that he has. And then for the white cat, I decide I want to remove one of his original eyes, and it's a safety eye, which means it's kind of like annoying to take out. It has like a weird disc around it, so um, it might take you a minute and a lot of patience with nail scissors, but eventually you can get safety eyes out. <laughs> um, you might just kind of make a little bit of a hole in the stuffed animal. So before I replace the eye, I'm just taking some needle and thread and sewing up the giant hole that I made to make sure that the new eye doesn't fall out. And for the new eye, I'm just using a button. Um, I don't remember where I got this, just like some old button in my collection. And um, yeah, I feel like one regular eye and one button eye just gives that like sort of repaired broken teddy bear sort of look and I just I think it's cute it's it's a good look um for some reason this guy it, the the cat reminds me of a pirate a little bit but um yeah anyway and then for the bunny I'm also adding an extra glass uh black bead just like in the blue bunny but just adding one for him so he gets like sort of a third eye look instead of the spider look that the blue bunny got you know you want to mix it up a little make sure everyone all the different heads have like a little bit of a different vibe. Then it's time to add some earrings and stuff. So starting with the blue bunny, I'm cutting a fairly large hole into one of his ears and pushing a fairly large grommet through, then attaching the back part of the grommet and using the tools that the grommets come with to attach it. Um, it ends up making it look kind of like stretchers. I add two of them and I feel like it's a cute look. Uh, then I take my little jar of safety pins and find some little ones that I can start using as ear piercings for the pink bunny. For the white cat and his ears piercings, I'm using some screw and studs. I just made some holes with the nail scissors and then used the same studs that I used on the collar to make two little spiky ear piercing jewelry sort of things. Um, you can also use like human ear piercings and jewelry. If you have some earrings that you don't wear very often, you can totally put them on your stuffed animal creations. Then for other earrings, I am using some jump rings and a large needle to make a hole first and then the jump ring to just kind of make a little hoop of an ear piercing. It helps to have some pliers to open and close the jump rings while you're doing this and I wanted to make like a little row of earrings because I really like that look when people have multiple earrings in one year in a row. I only have three in one year and then two in the other but eh, my stuffed animal gets to have many more. <laughs> Um, so that's fun. And then also adding some hoop earrings to the bunny in the same fashion by just poking a big hole with the needle and then using a jump ring. Um, I'm also attaching a little chain, just like some scrap old jewelry chain, um, to the jump ring and then to a portion of the ear. And then I wanted to connect the rest of the chain to the nose. So I'm just using a needle and thread to attach a jump ring to the bunny's nose and then I can attach the chain to a jump ring and then attach that to the nose jump ring. So we have that cool jewelry that goes from the ear to the lower part of the ear to the nose. Um, again, it's really handy to have pliers when you're working with jump rings, but not totally necessary. And I'm happy with how he's looking so far, but he needs a couple more things. So I decide to use some sewing pins to give the kitty some sort of cheek piercings. Um, if you're giving this to a kid or something, I wouldn't recommend this step or like secure it with some hot glue so they don't get poked. Um, then I want to give him some little spikes in his forehead. So I'm using the spikes and just screwing them on a little bit to the base and cutting a small hole into the head where I want the spikes to go and just kind of poking them in. You probably should secure these with like fabric glue or hot glue or something like that, but I was too lazy and didn't do it. If you don't make your hole too big and you really force it in there, this step is not super necessary in my opinion, but I'm just giving him three little spikes so he kind of looks like a dinosaur. <laughs> and then for the bunny, I wanted to give him a very large tunnel type ear piercing, so doing the same thing that I did with the blue bunny where I'm using a large grommet and attaching the back of it. And I would recommend doing this on the floor like this, not on the table like I did earlier. Put the grommet on the thingy, put the tool inside, and then use a hammer to flatten out the grommet. Sorry that my hand's in the way. It's a little bit difficult to see, but it's fairly straightforward of a process. And then I wanted to make him some little bracelets, so I'm using some elastic cord from the thrift store and these little star-shaped beads and these little heart-shaped beads that have little letters on them to make a tiny bracelet that says creepy for um, a little 
you know, accessory for the hand and sliding it on his little wrist. So there it goes. And then I wanted to add a pearl extra eye, but the pearl wasn't really a bead. It was just, like, it didn't have a hole in it. So I'm doing this thing where I'm trying to kind of create a indent with some thread. I think it's called thread sculpting. You can look up tutorials if you're interested in it. I'm not very good at it, uh, but I'm making an indent before I glue down the pearl um, so that it kind of looks like it's more in there. And still looking pretty good, but needs a couple more things. So I'm going in again with my tiny, tiny safety pins and just attaching a row down the pink bunny's face. I got this idea from the stitches who like did safety pins all over this red bear's body and it just looks so cool. Then I'm taking some gauze from the medicine cabinet and just giving this guy a little broken arm, um, wrapping it up and securing it with hot glue. Then I'm trimming a little bit of the fur around the eyes because um, it just felt like you couldn't see them very well. And then I'm taking my sewing pins again and just adding some facial piercings to the bunny with them, just adding them kind of in a line down the face. And I wasn't really a big fan of the blue bunny snout, so to cover it up, I'm using some of that medical gauze again and again securing it in place. There was just like kind of some weird stitching on it and I thought it would look better, more blank. And then I'm taking a little black bat sequin that I got around Halloween and attaching it in the center of his forehead. So it kind of looks like an extra eye, but it's like very long. And then I'm attaching a little white piece of elastic lace with hearts in it around one of the arms as like a little bracelet and using a piece of white kind of satin ribbon to make a little bow on another one of the arms, just trimming it to size. And for a little decoration on it, I used this spider web sequin that again I got around Halloween at the dollar store, and I'm attaching just a little cute pink pearl on it to give it an extra little just cute touch. And then on the bunny, I glued this piece of ribbon together in an X shaped and then just glued that onto the bunny because I didn't want him to have that smiley look, I wanted to have him kind of like a X'd out mouth look. So that's looking pretty cute. A little tuna interlude because she's the cutest of them all. Look at that little baby lady. I am so lucky to have her in my life. I freaking love her. Look at her. Look at her. Ah! So f cute. How does one do it? Then I'm using a old string of pearls, kind of, to make a weird little dinosaur type spine. I don't know, I thought it would be cool to have kind of a bumpy ridge spine like some dinosaurs have. So um, I'm just sewing this pearl stringy thing in a line down my creature's back to give the illusion of that sort of thing. Um, you could also glue it down, but I thought it would be nicer to not have potential globs of glue in the fur, so just sewing that on with Tuna's help, of course. And then I have this little coffin sequin that says Rip um, that I got at the dollar store around Halloween again, and I'm just attaching it as like a little charm to the back of the collar and the bow. And then I have all these little pearl beads that aren't really beads because they don't have holes in them, they're just little like plastic pearls that I got on AliExpress and they're really pretty and like holog holographic but they're very inconvenient for not having holes in them. Ugh. Anyway, so I'm just using some hot glue to attach them all over the back of the guy so it kind of looks, I don't know, like a sea creature or something. Then um, just adding some more satin ribbon bows. This one's a black bow. There's a lot of really good tutorials on YouTube about how to tie really pretty bows if you are not confident in your bow tying skills. And then I'm just adding this little silver bat sequin that I got around Halloween um, to the bow as a little centerpiece. Very cute, very precious. And then I'm taking this plastic Halloween spider ring that I got at the dollar store and spraying it with some Mr. Super Clear. You could also just use another type of um, just matte spray paint, but you just want something clear that um, will give a little bit of a texture to it. And I'm using some black acrylic paint to make it all matte black and one color. And I wanted to make this a little tail charm, so I'm just uh, using the ring portion that normally goes around your finger to put it on the tail. And I'm taking these little um, gem stickers from the dollar store and attaching them to the spider in two spots. And then I wanted to add just a couple extra um, earring jewelry pieces, so there's a little extra piece of chain. And that's that. Okay, and that's all I got for you today. Thank you, thank you so much for sticking with me. I really hope that um, that was enjoyable, that I'm sending a big hug to you wherever you are. And um, yeah, lots of love. Have a good one. Hope that you are inspired and make all the weird and creepy plushies of your dreams. Okay, bye guys. Thanks again. Bye.